So I wanted to do a video on butchering your deer start to finish. In a lot of uh, venison cookbooks you come across, you'll have uh, pictures that depict how you're going to take everything apart into subprimals, from primals, into your major cuts for your recipes you're going to do. That's useful, but I think sometimes you'll lose you get lost on what side of the leg you're working off of for a lot of these things. And, um, you know, I think actually seeing someone do it is always a lot more useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this deer down the way I would break my deer down. I don't use a processor for any of my stuff. I just got a grinder too, so I don't, gr I don't take it, any of my stuff to get ground. So. I'm gonna, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it obviously, but I'm gonna do it my way. So I'll show you how I take this whole rear leg off and I'm gonna cut it into subprimals. I don't grind anything off the rear leg except for trim pieces. Uh, then we're gonna come down and we're gonna do just an inside tenderloin piece, which everyone knows how to take out the tenderloin. If you don't, I'm gonna show you that anyhow. And then we're gonna do a boneless short loin section of the back strap and then a bone-in rack. We're gonna show you that too. And then just on the other back strap, we will show you how to just straight up bone that out the way everyone usually does it. And then front shoulders, we're gonna break that down into pieces. I'll usually take one of my front shoulders and grind it, and then I'll take the other one and uh, cut a bone-in roast, and then uh, always retain the front shanks is what I do. But that way you've got a couple roasts if you kill a couple deer and then you've got really good ground, grind stuff here. And then the neck, I usually either cut a bone-in neck roast out of it or I'll cut a boneless roast or I'll just cube it for grind. So I'm just going to kind of run through this deer and use one half to do it one way and another half to do any variation that I usually do. So first we're going to start with the back leg. I usually like, I like to do it hanging up. A lot of guys like to lay it out on a table. I like, I like the tension that gravity provides when you're taking one of these off. <clears throat> so, I like a boning knife, a semi-flexible knife. This one's just a real cheap knife I got at my local butcher shop. I think it was like five or six bucks. But a knife like this is stiff enough that you can get in between the bones and stuff and it's still flexible enough you can kind of scrape the meat away too. So to start, you got a natural seam here that you're just gonna, I like to cut down until I hit the pelvis. If you sawed through your pelvis, that's already split. So that's a pretty easy place to start. Then you'll come over here and connect that cut that you just started there down the middle of the pelvis. Okay, so this leg is gonna to wanna to fall off with the gravity. So if you think about the way a deer's pelvis is laid out, it's actually almost like an oval shape if you look at it from the back. So that bone actually comes out like this, almost like an A and another A here. So when I start, you'll be able to feel your knife bottom in and out on bone. So turn your blade and just kinda of just like you're filleting a fish, you always want to be ticking along the edge of that bone. And then you're going to go up and around a little knob. That's the point of that pelvis or the hip. So as soon as you go around that point, you got to remember that it's going to, it's going to come back in pretty quick. So see how quick that switch was. And now we come down here. And the spine is starting right behind the tail. So now we're into the, this would be the rump roast in here. So I just kind of follow along the edge of that spine. This deer's got a ton of fat too. We had awesome acorn crop this year. So that's kind of why you're seeing that. But it's kind of by feel. But if you look right there, you can kind of see the edge of where that tough stuff starts around the spine. So I've literally followed the edge of that down. And then this would be the top of the hip. Kind of like where you'd have like the dimple in your lower back. This is the deer's lower back. Kind of where he clips together. So you've got a bone here that's gonna stop you. 
and mark where your back strap actually starts and your hind leg, your rump actually ends. So I just kind of follow that around. You don't want to keep going because you're going to get into your back strap and it's tough to uh, delineate it out. So from there, once that's kind of loose, you'll notice I'm just slowly loosening the bottom of the leg from the top of the leg. And here, your pelvis kind of runs downward. Like I said, if you just keep feeling that bone, you'll, you'll feel the seams. This is pretty boneless here. That that'll come all the way up to the base of the femur. But now that we've got this loosened and the back loosened, the leg's gonna wanna fall. So you'll see when you open this up, see that little shiny round ball right there? That's where your ball and socket is. And there's a, there's a ligament in between. You stick the tip of your knife blade down in there, you can actually, if you give this some pressure, you can actually stick your knife blade right in there and pop that thing loose. Let me see. Sometimes it's tougher and you gotta cut a little bit more. But that ball joint, there it goes. So if you look back over here where that ball joint is again, now that it's exposed a little bit better, you can see it's wanting to fold outward. And you can watch it from the front as I loosen this. There. See that ligament, ball, socket, ligament. And now your leg's gonna just guide it off of the pelvis. Just like you're flaying a fish. See that here's the edge of the the edge of the pelvis. That legs that dra gravity is gonna help you. you just kind of peel everything away. So now you got the whole leg off of there. So kind of set that down. We'll come back to this whole thing when, we, when we're ready to cut something else off. So now that you've removed your hind leg, this is gonna be the outer edge. You see, you've kind of got these seams that you can see right here. You got a seam here that runs up through. Those are all separations in these major muscle groups. First thing I like to do is this front muscle. You can see the line there and a line here coming around. This is gonna be your sirloin. So below that joint is where the muscles kinda of connect into the leg bone. So you wanna kinda, of, and then just follow that seam. If you just barely break that seam open, you can kinda of get your finger in there. And now you can see the separation in the muscle right there. So, you follow separation just keep following it till you get to the bone and you can see now we're exposing the femur down in there keep working it off away from the femur A lot of people call this the football roast too because of the way it looks. You can always trim that waist out of the way. And then it comes right to here and it connects with another muscle. Now the football roast is coming loose. And 
And once you start looking for these seams, you'll be able to kind of tell where they're at by the way it looks on the outside, but then once you're in there, they've got all that connective tissue in between. They're pretty easy to pull apart, even just with your fingers. So there's what you would call the football roast, obviously untrimmed. Uh, in a beef, they'd call it the sirloin, or sirloin tip. This one's got a lot of connective tissue running through the middle of it. It's actually the only, one of the only roasts in the hind leg that has that. Most of them are pretty uniform, and once you trim them, they're just solid meat. So with this one, I usually put this in a crock pot and slow cook it. Some people might say you should grind it. Um, it's one of the only hind leg roasts I don't like to actually roast hot and eat, you know, medium rare, medium. Just because it's got a lot of stuff running through it. So the next part, we're going to keep working up the leg. Um, we'll flip this over. Now that we've got the sirloin tip off, we're going to come back here. And this is kind of like a jumble of stuff is what it looks like. This is actually the piece that was laying right above the back strap, kind of like in the lower part of the back. This is gonna be your rump roast. It's always got this big fat cap on it if your deer's been eating real good. So I'll usually come in here and just start trying to peel it away from the head of the femur. You can still see the femur sticking right here. And if you come around on it, kind of start peeling it apart. The problem here that you're gonna run into is there's a lot of fat covering where you'd usually be able to see your separation point. But you can keep peeling this away. There we go. So that's pretty much your rump right there. And the next muscle group underneath that, now we're gonna start getting into our round roasts. See, even if you don't really know what these are, it's, it's easy to keep just working from one muscle to the other and taking them apart. You can kind of see a seam running right here between these two. That's gonna be the top and bottom round. So, if you come up here along the shank, you can start taking them apart. And I'll come back in here again. Now that they're kind of rolling apart, you can see the change between the two. You can get your finger in there and spread it. Yeah, I was just cutting through the fat there, but that's that's your top. There's a lot of fat on it that needs trim, but that's a solid muscle right there. And once you trim this, there is not a speck of sinew in it here. I'll show you the I'll show you the difference just for the sake of showing this. There's your sirloin tip. So it's actually like a group of muscles together separated by some connective tissue. Here's your top round other than the fat that needs trim, that's a solid piece of meat. There's nothing in there between the muscle. No silver skin, nothing tough. That's a better eaten cut for roasting. Okay, so then over here, we still got two more round pieces to take off. They just kind of keep peeling away from each other. This one kind of looks like a tenderloin this is actually eye of round that you, you'd get out of any other beef or pork. This deer is super fatty, but here's your eye of round. That's K1 
killer on the grill. You can see the grain pattern in it is a lot like a tenderloin. And that, and that muscle is solid all the way through too. You're not gonna hit any stringy, grisly pieces in it. And then the last one is the bottom round. Obviously there's more muscles in the hind leg than what I'm doing, but these smaller muscles that you're gonna run into are kind of just hanging out there. It, unless you're butchering an elk or something, smaller muscles are kind of negligible and I'll usually just cube them because they're not big enough for a roast. So here's your bottom. Untrimmed, obviously. We could clean that up a lot, but see, and you could see the grain pattern in this one too. So if I was to trim this, I'd probably just stick my knife in there like that and I just work my way out. And you wanna keep that as thin as possible. This deer's hung for about six days, so you'll see that dark stuff on the outside. I like to kind of trim that all off the best that I can without wasting too much. This is one of those secondary muscles I'm talking about. You can see it kind of rolling off the top of the round. So this will be good grind stuff. I mean, this isn't getting thrown away, but as far as trimming up a roast that you're gonna make a meal out of. I like to really make it nice that way the day you're going to cook it you don't have all this extra work to do. So you see that fat just kind of come off of there. Now you're starting to get an idea what that roast is going to look like and you can see the you can see the grain pattern in it really nice and even if this a lot of times when you take your deer to a butcher and you get those ultra thin steaks that get pretty dry and nasty this is usually what they're cutting it out of and they're cutting like quarter inch steaks out of a deer you just you can't do it there's not enough moisture in the meat so the last thing I do with the hind leg is take my shank apart so anytime you're taking a, a joint apart, you can learn a lot about the way it needs to come apart by the way it bends. You'll see up in there, this is pretty much the joint where the femur is gonna connect to the shank. So it takes some feeling around. It's definitely not like, I'd imagine if you did like 10 deer in a year, you'd start getting good, but I always seem to forget from year to year. And it's a tough joint too. You figure that's all the way to the deer coming in there. But now you can really see it. You kind of see how that thing operates. But you'll see when you start loose when you see when you start loosening it, you'll feel it. It'll it'll keep getting easier and easier to bend as you cut this stuff away. I'm just working my knife in the middle of that joint. I'm not trying to cut bone. And then I'll come over here on the meat side because the muscle is going to hold it together as much as the actual joint is. So I'll just give that a little pop. And now all you've got is probably a ligament down in there that you can just sever with your knife. So the femur will be reserved. I'll throw this thing in the oven with similar size bones, you know, a shoulder bone and the other femur. Roast them, cover them in cold water, and make stock. And you can freeze that, can it, whatever you want to do. This is your shank. And all I'll do with this, I'll sever that tendon on this shank. And then I'll take the bone saw and I'll just kind of clean this up. This is going to be good for your stock as well. There's a lot of collagen and stuff in these joints. It'll make your stock really rich. But for the meal end of things, if you're just gonna eat your shank, you don't want all that extra space being taken up in your stock pot or in your braising pot. So that'll go into the soup pile. Now you got a shank. You see the marrows exposed there. 
that's great for Asabuco. You could do this one whole. Uh, for, with deer, I usually do them whole. With an elk or a really big deer, you can cross cut them. You'll see in the Asabuco recipe I have, you can cross cut them about that thick and you'll end up with a disc with the bone running through the middle like a, the classic preparation calls for. I'll take this whole thing and put it in a Dutch oven and cook it on a Sunday. It'll be awesome. So I'm gonna leave it like that. that. That cut's pretty much done. So other than fine trimming, this stuff is pretty much taken apart. So you got on one hind leg, you've got your sirloin, your bottom round, your top round, your eye of round, you got some soup bones, you're gonna have a lot of trim. This is your rump. I almost forgot about it over there. So there's your rump roast, which is it usually gets cubed for me. And then you got your shank. So that's the hind leg.